Good morning. Today is the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Mass this morning is being offered for Kevin and Michael Gilman. This week's second collection will be for the AD Times. Parochial School continues on Monday at 6 p.m. for peeling potatoes and Wednesday at 9 a.m. for pinching the pierogies. February lecture schedules are available on the website, in your email, and there are copies in the sacristy. We also need the assistance of Eucharistic ministers at the 8.30 and 10.30 Sunday Masses. We are still following the COVID protocol, so we ask you to be in good health. Attention to all prep teachers, vacation Bible school volunteers, any other parish volunteers who work with children and all employees. Background checks are coming due for renewal in the very near future. Please take a background check authorization form from the back of church, complete and return in a sealed envelope to the office as soon as possible. If you have already done this, you do not need to do another form. Those 65 and older, please remember to schedule your COVID-19 vaccine shot. We need you to keep you in our pews. And thank you to those who stay after Sunday Masses each week to sanitize the pews. Please just spray all surfaces. Do not wipe them dry. There is a better sanitation if it is allowed to air dry. Please pray with me the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God be him to whom we pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast out into the Satan, and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the good of souls. Amen. Please rise and read Father Bill. Our hymn can be found in our supplement. It's number one. All are welcome, number one, in our supplement.
for the times that we become sluggish, for the times that we become lazy, for those times that we become sinful. And now we seek God's mercy as we acknowledge our sins. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
From now on, let those having wives act as not having. Those weeping as not weeping. Those rejoicing as not rejoicing. Those buying as not owning. Those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jonah spent three days in the belly of the whale. 
And the whale takes him to the shores of Nineveh, where he spits him up on shore. But even then, Jonah is reluctant. God, I hate you. I am mad at you. I am a good person. I do what you ask. But I don't want any part of this. And then Jonah realizes that God has changed him even more. His dark skin has been bleached white by the gastric juices of the whale. So now, rather than fitting in, he stands out like a sore thumb. And even reluctantly grumbling underneath his breath, maybe even cursing God a little. Okay, you win. Let me get this over with. I'm going to do it. And he begins his mission half-hearted. Forty days more and Nineveh will be destroyed. And we heard the reading, if you read the reading, if you recall the reading, it says Nineveh was an extremely large city. It was going to take Jonah at least three days to get from one end of the city to the other end just to preach repentance to the people. And Jonah's not even halfway done the first day. And the king and everybody is in sackcloth and ashes, asking God to forgive them, to save them. And Jonah becomes even all the more peeled. I told you, God, this was going to happen. You could have done this. You didn't need me. Why did you disturb where I'm at? Well, Jonah is still hopeful that God is going to do something. And so he goes up on the hill, finds a nice shady broom tree, makes himself comfortable, and is waiting for God to come down and smite Nineveh and create this mushroom cloud. Well, we know the story. God smites the broom tree, and now Jonah's cursing all the more because now he's in the hot sun. He doesn't realize what God has called him to do is not something to be done half-hearted, but rather with one whole soul, realizing that God directs his life. As I said, that's a very sharp contrast to Jesus in the Gospel today. Jesus who has this love and devotion and respect for the Heavenly Father. And while Jesus would be a good person, Jesus knows that the Father calls him to be more, to go out and preach the good news, and to make God hearing people. Kind of sounds a little bit like all of us, doesn't it? Most of us, we don't make ways. We do what we're told. We get a little bit frustrated, a little bit grumpy, a little bit tired. We're tired about being trampled on by everybody else. But yet we're good people. We're very much like Jonah. And we kind of maybe kind of grumble. Probably think that makes us grumble enough for more is the fact that Nothing is ever good enough. Doctor tells me, go lose weight, go to the office, hop on the scale. Oh, you lost five pounds. No pat on the back. No saying, what are you doing? Just you lost five pounds. You know, you really could lose more. Well, thanks an awful lot. Yeah. Went to the doctor a couple weeks ago, said, I'm having some trouble with my digestive tract. He said, eat more fruits and vegetables. Eat more salad. I said, doctor, that's all I do. I eat very little sweets. Well, once again. <laughs> we at times feel frustrated. there's times where it seems nobody listens.
And this was the predicament that Jonah found himself in. Nobody listens to me, even to the point where he stopped his ears to God. Jonah might have had a lot of heart, but after a while it became half-hearted, and he didn't care. How many of us have put ourselves into something wholeheartedly, only to be frustrated? Some of you are really into politics. So you put everything behind your party, your candidate, and then your candidate loses. And then you want to go kick the cat. Because it's not fair, it's not right. You do everything to please your spouse, and it's never good enough. You take care of your kids, and they run off in temper tantrums. You don't understand. You don't listen to me. Putting our heart in something is very important. But when we put our heart into something, we can become disappointed. And the message of the gospel today is, God calls you and me not to put our heart into something, but our whole soul, our whole being. Realizing and recognizing that everything that I am, everything that you are, is a gift from God. And God has created you uniquely. He has blessed you with talents and abilities that no one else in this church can do. Somewhere along the way, we thought priests could do anything. Father can handle it. Father will get him to come. You know, sometimes when I walk into a hospital room with someone that hasn't darkened the door of the church and who knows when, and now they're dying, what do you want? Get out of here. God didn't take care of me before. Why should I listen to you now? And yet there could be a family member, a friend, a nurse that shows this person the love of God and maybe softens their heart up a little bit and brings life to their soul to realize I can't go through life bitter. Any good people go through life bitter. But people with soul don't go through life bitter. Because they realize that God is by our side. Abraham Lincoln, who we believe is one of our greatest presidents, in 1860, was very frustrated. The Union troops were not doing very well. The generals weren't listening. And so we lost many military campaigns to the Confederates, not out of knowledge and skill, but because they were all half-hearted. And as a president of the United States, when your side loses, how can you win everybody over to hear the message? Worse still, but yet he was a victim of his own doing. We know that he created a cabinet of opposites, of people who hated him, his own enemies. But if he thought it could only bring them together, even with their differences, we could solve problems. And one of the biggest problems that he had to tackle with this cabinet, with the American public, with his generals, was the problem of slavery. And two years later, he signs the Emancipation Proclamation. 
And he declares, I believe this with my whole soul. Not just his heart, but his whole soul. That God has called him to do this. President Biden and his inaugural address referred to Abraham Lincoln. And he says, with his whole soul, he believes in America. And we have to restore the soul of America. What about you and me restoring the soul of our faith? There's not a bad person in this church. 95, 96% of you, I can know by name and at least tell you something about yourself. None of us in this church is a bad person. None of us is a criminal. None of us is a wife or a husband, Peter. None of us is negligent of your children. We're good people. But just sitting in a pew for 45 minutes or an hour on a Sunday doesn't necessarily make us people with soul. We have to live our faith and live it well. God is always with us. God always forgives. Jesus calls us because he sees some of himself in us. And he calls us to do his will. Unlike Jonah, the reluctant prophet, who did see God's call and grumbled every step of the way. Just one real quick commercial. Um, as you know, we have already begun to make pierogies in Lent for Lent. Pierogies is our major fundraiser. We bring in $30,000 in making pierogies. And we need about $45,000, $50,000 worth of fundraising so that we can provide what we provide. So that's a biggie. But in the years that we've been doing pierogies, we become short-sighted in the fact that people get old, people get sick, people pass away. When we first started making pierogies, there used to be 16 ladies who rolled the dough by hand. All those 16 ladies are gone. We have people right now who have been faithful workers, afraid to come out because of the COVID. And even though we're trying to take every precaution we possibly can, we all know what that fear is like. Yesterday they said every 30 seconds a person died in the United States because of COVID. Isn't that scary? But yet we also need, as we know, to be able to try and continue on. I'm happy to say that on Monday night we got a great crew of potato peelers. I'm happy to say that on Wednesday when it comes time to pinch in pierogies, we got a great crew. But as we get closer to the beginning of Lent, one of the hardest jobs, and yet the reason why people buy our pierogies, is because we cook them. And they can buy them for lunch, or they can buy them and take them home for supper and make a quick Lenten meal. We are hurting most with our ladies and men who make the pierogies, boil the pierogies on Ash Wednesday and Fridays in Lent. The ladies just can't do it anymore. So I'm asking if some of you would be very kind enough to consider helping with the making, the boiling of the pierogies. There's seven times where we boil pierogies. And if you can help us out once, twice, three times, that would be a tremendous help for other people. We have a great kitchen downstairs, 
but we even have a better kitchen now in Immaculate that isn't being used right now. We can cut the making of pierogies time in half if we only had the staff of six people or so in each kitchen to help. So I'd ask you please to ponder that. If you can, please let us know. It's not just for the benefit of a few, it's for the benefit of all. We have the best parish in all Stoke County. I firmly believe that. But yet there's times where it's always the same people. And so a few new, few, a, a few new faces would certainly be appreciated. I believe in one God.
Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.